And we're live. So welcome to the Green Age Facebook Live. Uh, I know it's the weekend, but just before we sort of break up, uh, we've got a little bit of time to talk about time of use tariffs. James, what are they? So time of use tariff. Uh, it is essentially where you pay um, different amounts to your energy supplier for uh, electricity, depending on when you use it during the day. So uh, at the moment, there are a couple of energy tariffs. So you have one that's just a standard tariff. So you pay a set amount if you use it at midnight, or you use it at three in the morning, whenever. It doesn't make any difference. So it's like my, so I get, um, so when I get my bill, it's sort of the daily set amount and then whatever I use is. Yes, exactly. So, you, so you, you've got the amount, you, the amount of units of electricity you use, so kilowatt hours of electricity, but you also have a standing charge, which is the right to have electricity. So you have to pay 20p a day, for example, for electricity. And then you pay 12.5p-ish for a unit of electricity. And as I said, it's the same depending if you use it you know, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon or 3 o'clock in the morning or whenever. The, um, the other type of tariff is called Economy 7. So an Economy 7, it's mainly where you just have electricity in your home, so you don't have any, any gas. Uh, but you pay two rates. So you pay a cheaper rate for nighttime electricity and a more expensive uh, rate for, for daytime electricity. So the economy seven, the seven refers to the seven hours of cheaper electricity you're getting. Right. And it okay. tends to be between 11 and 8, seven hours between those two slots. So, so, so basically, and, and I think this is this is where the mis... I mean, slightly veering off the topic, but um, this is where people, I think, don't fully understand it. So they're on, a, say, a standard tariff and they think when turn their washing machine on at night that they're using cheap electricity but actually if you're on standard it doesn't make any difference yeah. it doesn't make any difference um exactly so those people they to benefit from that they have to be on economy seven um now on the whole you, that's most common when people have storage heaters mm -hmm. um so storage heaters they charge when the electricity is cheap at night yeah and then the theory is that sort of the next evening you can turn the heating on and then it heats your home um, the problem we're seeing with a lot of the older storage heaters is that by the time you try and turn the heating on, they've lost their charge. So the heat that's been stored in them has escaped during the day. Um, so, you know, new storage heaters are a lot better at doing that, uh, but there's, there's still limitations to them. So time of use, going back onto it. So this is, this is where the big sea change is going to happen. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, so um, the two previous ones, economy and standard tariffs, they're both administered through electricity meters. So your standard meter, um, your economy seven meter. Uh, these new uh, time of use tariffs are gonna be administered by the smart meters. Um, and smart meters are gonna be rolled out to every home, uh, so the government says, uh, in the next few years. Um, and, and basically what that allows the energy suppliers to do is see, uh, what it, you know any moment in time who's using what uh, how much electricity is being used uh, and, and actually allows for some quite interesting things to happen one of which is this time of use tariff so they can see demand in the grid yeah uh, all through the day you know so they can see there's less demand at night and, and they have a really accurate picture built up by everyone having these smart meters and so the time of use tariff yeah. allows them to say you know at when there's peak demand so in the early afternoon well late afternoon, early evening, they can charge more for electricity uh, for that particular slot to try and dampen demand. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, when there's lots of electricity in the grid, but not very much demand, they can make it much cheaper. So so basically, um, uh, for... Well, I mean, is there... I mean, can, can So for consumers really interested in what you just said, can they go to an energy supply now and, and actually get one of these time of use tariffs or? so they you could go there are a few companies obviously offering, on, offering economy seven it would be very unusual to move to an economy seven tariff now yeah um there is so green energy uk a couple of weeks ago released the first time of use tariff um the headline figures from that are that there are various charging times throughout the day so economy seven but instead of just two times where they charge different amounts there's four times um, so you get uh, in the evening, as we said before, you get very, very cheap electricity, very much like economy seven. Um, and then during the daytime, it goes up to sort of a, a sort of standard rate, I guess, which we'd expect to pay. And then in those early, early evening hours, it's really expensive. So electricity is twenty-five p a unit. Now, 
they always sort of the government release figures, they always say it's 12.5p for a unit of electricity. So 25p is obviously twice that. So if you're doing your washing then, it is going to be very expensive. The, the flip side of that is the electricity at uh, during the, the cheaper hours is only 5p. So it's 4.99 pence per kilowatt hour, which is, you know, less than half. So, uh, so in theory, you know, if, if you did your washing and that sort of thing at those times, it would start saving you money. So uh, I think it's all, it's, it's all great, but I think, you know, maybe I think if consumers got it first time and stuff and, um, you know, maybe they'd adopt, adopt some of these changes in behavior. But, I, you know, I think something else will need to happen for me, you know, like getting a, a battery storage technology. So actually people are, um, I mean, they will only really benefit from it, I think, if they're allowed to kind of um, live as they are today. So not change too much of their habits, yes, but also yeah, benefit from this. I think, I think that's a game changer. That's going to be the thing, uh, you know, battery technology has been about for people with solar panels and wind turbines and that sort of stuff. Um, it tends to be early adopters. The term investment, the ROI isn't great at the moment on batteries. Um, however, this, this could be the game changer. This could take it mainstream. Um, and, and basically what you're saying, quite rightly, is that we don't want to get people to use their washing machines at times they wouldn't normally. You know, why change habits i mean it's great to try and do that but it's difficult to do it You'd be right? quite annoyed if your neighbor turns on their washing machine at exactly 3 a.m in the morning exactly you know, hear it through the walls exactly so so the 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 idea is that if battery technology uh, were to allow this and we're talking about relatively large capacity batteries but you could charge it during these cheaper evening hours pay 5p for electricity and then use that during the day uh, and so suddenly, instead of paying 12.5p or a standard tariff for your electricity, you're paying 5p a unit. Um, so the savings, you know, 7.5p per unit of electricity, that's pretty big. You know, an average person uses 4,500 kilowatt, kilowatt hours of electricity a year, which is quite a big number. So you times that, uh, you know, by 7.5p saving, you're looking, uh, now I'm going to try and do some maths in my head, but it's about 300 and 20 ish pounds yes yeah. I, I don't know if that's quite right but it's somewhere near there um and uh you know that's that's quite a nice saving and um, when solar pv first came out they were looking at having sort of six seven year paybacks because of the feeding tariffs well you know three three hundred quid plus a year and you put two thousand pound batch system in you're looking now at the same sort of payback um, so battery i mean yeah so what you just said is the the cost of batteries has got to well and and their durability has got to increase the cost yep. has got to come down yeah so actually you know i'm not having to replace one every four years and forking out you know three four thousand yeah pounds. exactly exactly um if you i mean the, the solar pv industry has taken a battering obviously because of the um the the have gone yep. down but uh, i can see you know from what you just said i can see that industry going back up again if consumers can see that you know, I can get the storage. So, so actually, you know, all that energy I'm, I'm using, I can store it. Yeah. At no cost at all. Yeah. But then use it when it's really expensive to buy from a grid, and then suddenly, so the PV market would, you know, yeah, I mean, up again. so, so, uh, we, you know, we were speaking to a solar divert company the other day about this, and and you know the the prospect of having a unit that can obviously absorb electricity and direct that to immersions and that sort of thing when you're not using all the electricity in the home that your solar panels are producing, as well as being able to manage it so it draws power from the grid when it's cheap and then allows you to discharge that around the house, you know, as, a, as and when you're going to use it, but you've, you're using cheap electricity to do that from your battery. There's a huge potential there and it's quite an exciting, exciting moment. So I think you know, the, the the smart meters, which I don't know if you've read the press, people have pretty mixed reaction to mm -hmm. it. Um, but uh, for, for this side of it, it could be a real game changer, which could be really exciting. I think as well, uh, so, um, and it's quite a generic term at the moment, but a smart grid, essentially. So as we're trying to decarbonize the fuels that we use for power stations, say, so mm -hmm. coal and all that stuff, so coal nuclear, you've got to have them turned on all the time and, yeah. and actually you're, you're wasting energy yeah. but, but suddenly if, if we had uh, smart meters a smart grid to tell you it's going to be windy today 
So actually, everyone yep. putting it out to their batteries, then yeah, you know that's where the the real sort of excitement. And, and I, th I think for the government, you know, the government are very very keen to get smart meters installed, for for those reasons. You know, they it is costly to install new capacity in the grid. If they can introduce energy efficiency, so demand goes down um, for electricity, but they can also sort of reduce demand by implementing things like making hugely expensive electricity during dinner time. You know, so so actually our peak our peak electricity mm -hmm. demand is much lower. Then you don't need the extra capacity. Yes. Uh, and so again, from from their point of view. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than building a new nuclear power plant or you know new gas power plants, um, and so uh, so it's 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 a good idea I think. Uh, yeah, then I guess so. If you knew you could control demand like that, then I guess they would be under so much pressure to always you know uh, replace the power stations that are going out of exactly. business now, exactly. and then they could sort of have a bit longer time to plan how they can have alternative ways of, of generating it as well. So, so exactly. that's, that's positive. Yeah, so I, so I think the um, the future of Time Use Tariffs is very exciting. Um, I think it'll see batteries grow. I think the market will grow. Simplified billing. Simplified well billing. Important. People know what they're using. Mm -hmm. um, they, I think when you get a smart meter installed, and I'm due to have mine installed shortly, um, but they, they give you a, a display unit so you can see how many units of electricity you're using which I'm sure is only useful for many people for the first week of having it installed. Yeah. Quite interesting to see, and then they kind of don't care, which I understand. Um, but, you know, for the first time, it is drawing attention to that, and people suddenly can see what they're using, and they can try and cut things that are costly. I think if you run it and you put your tumble dryer on, and it's sunny outside, you might think, you know what, actually, I, I could go and have my clothes yeah. outside. That's so hopefully point. some of these behavioural changes will come in. Very good, I think. I think that sort of captures it. Uh, we will keep abreast of all the issues as they as they arise, and obviously try and bring it on to to our viewers. Uh, if subsequently we've got any more questions and, and feedback in the comments below the video, we will try our best to answer it back. Uh, but that's it from us for another week. Have a lovely weekend, and we'll see you soon.